This video is sponsored by Herman Miller's brand new Vantam Gaming Chair. Herman Miller has partnered with Logitech to enter into the gaming chair realm to provide a premium option for maximum comfort while playing games, either at a PC or even console games on your 75-inch TV. It provides superior back support with a comfortable headrest while providing a plush yet firm cushion for your tush. Ever important during those long gaming sessions. It includes a lot of adjustability to personalize the chair to exactly your own comfort level. And my favorite feature is the breathable mesh material, which really cuts down on the sweat often seen when gaming in long sessions. You can check out Herman Miller's Phantom Gaming Chair through the link in the description for more details. Hey everyone, welcome back to Nintendo Prime. And we are going to talk about one thing today. Well, I might bring up a couple of things to be completely honest. I know a little bit out of sync this week that that, that review of Sparks of Hope really took a lot out of me over the last week. <laughs> so we're not really back to our regular content, but something came out today on Switch that I was actually looking forward to and hasn't been talked about much on this channel. A brand new third party port of a major game that I thought could and should run pretty well on Switch. After all, it's not like the game we're going to be talking about here is really that, you know, of a massive looking, great looking game. We've seen games on Switch that look on par with this on other systems. Obviously, maybe not at the same resolution or frame rate, but still visually speaking, it didn't really look like something that was beyond the capabilities of Switch. And yes, I'm happy this game is here locally and not through a cloud version we're talking about Alan Wake Remastered. So it released on Switch today, and I've been busy watching, you know, opinions on it and, and, and watching analysis and all these videos, and it turns out that Alan Wake Remastered is bad. It's really bad on Switch. One, I think we're long past the days of needing to wait for ports. Uh, look, Switch has been on the market now for almost six years it's been the market leader for at least three and we're at this point that getting a port of a game that clearly looks like it should be able to run on switch getting it this late after the original release on other platforms is starting to become a little less excusable and if you're going to say well you know other games that aren't major nintendo ips don't sell on switch Return to Monkey Island, well, yes, technically a Switch exclusive, at least for now, is obviously not some major Nintendo game. It's a third-party game, and guess what? It is the fastest-selling game in the entire franchise. And we have actually seen this happen a few times with third-party games that actually put in effort. Doom Eternal and Doom 2016 both sold decently well on Switch. We have seen Mortal Kombat 11 do decent sales on Switch. So third-party ports, multi-platform games can do well on Switch, if you treat the Switch and the Switch audience with respect and do a high quality port. Trust me, Switch owners are well aware we're not going to maybe get that 60 FPS. We're not going to maybe get that full 1080p resolution or all that. But we do have some expectations of at least a quality port. And we can tell with Alan Wake Remastered it is not that. The frame rate is all over the place. It dips down into the single digits at times. And the textures and the resolution dumping of this game, both in handheld and in docked mode, even if you're playing on a smaller screen in docked mode, is very, very bad. Uh, we're talking Ark Survival Evolved level of badness with the port. And the thing is, Alan Wake Remastered on other platforms isn't exactly considered one of the best looking games there is. It is genuinely considered to be, well, just okay in terms of modern day visuals, but to be expected, it's a remaster of an older game. And it's strange because it sort of feels like if they would have just ported the original Alan Wake instead of the remaster, it's almost as if that would have looked even better than what we ended up with this final product on Switch. And it just seems a little bit excuse inexcusable. Now look, it's one thing that a lot of obviously, you know, Switch haters, Nintendo haters are sort of dancing on Switch today because of this game. Oh, the Switch, look how bad this game runs. It's so weak, it can't even run Alan Wake Remastered at a decent looking uh, resolution and frame rate, a decent looking textures. And to be fair, they're not wrong, but it ain't because of the Switch's power. Again, the original Alan Wake looks better than this Alan Wake Remastered on Switch and ran on significantly worse hardware. 
This is the case of a horrendous port. And we can't just point to whatever company was hired to do this port. We also have to look at the parent studio and go, why did you let the game come out and switch in this state? There are many things you could have done instead of dumping textures down to in, like insanely low resolutions to the point that it looks like you're playing a game from the PS1 era at times. It is that bad. It is horrendous. There are times the game looks okay. Certain indoor shots, certain very specific issues where, oh, the game remembers that it can actually look decent. We have seen better looking games in this on Switch with this visual style. Look, there are other ways it could have been done. As an example, cut back on the, foil the foliage. Like, you know, you don't need a billion bushes and blades of grass for this game to work. You can cut back on it a little bit keep the better textures, the better frame rates, and have less issues. The character models are dumping down. The tree models are just an embarrassment. They're making Pokemon trees look good. And we all know that Pokemon tree models aren't exactly great. And suddenly they look amazing compared to these tree models. It's, I, I don't understand why companies are choosing to treat Switch like it is a, an afterthought. I mean, let's just be honest. Not only is this port extremely late, and not only are they 20% off at launch, but still significantly more expensive than other platforms today. We, we've sort of got accustomed to that, but it doesn't make it right. But it's a horrendous port. It's bad. And I don't like calling this out because it just makes other companies feel like maybe it's not even worth us bringing our games over. But if you're going to bring a game over, respect the audience. This game feels like a massive disrespect to the Switch audience that otherwise might have been pretty accepting of this game. This game could have gone on to sell 500,000 copies, maybe even coming close to a million copies on Switch if it was a well-done port and they charge like about 20 bucks for it. You know, you have $20, you have a really well-done port. We tend to respect that. When, when, when a developer or a porting company respects the Switch audience, we tend to respect them back. Look at all the port jobs that Panic Button has done and how much support that's gotten from a lot of Nintendo Switch owners over the years. Even Tantalus and some of the port jobs they've done and the support Switch owners have given those games over the years. Then you see Alan Wake Remastered and you go, what the hell was even the point? This game shouldn't exist on Switch, at least not in this state. I'd rather have the original game ported over or emulated on Switch because let's just be honest, Switch destroys the original hardware that Alan Wake was on. This is an embarrassment and it almost makes the game unenjoyable. I'm going to be frank. It makes the game unenjoyable and that is extremely unfortunate because this could have been so much more. So naturally I'm really disappointed and I hope that other companies don't look at this and go, well, we're just not going to release games on switch. Maybe just put some care into your port. Actually give a crap. I'll give you another example of a port we get every single year, NBA 2K, right? It factually looks significantly worse on Switch than other platforms, of course. But the frame rate is consistent and the visual downgrades are within reason. It turns out that NBA 2K on Switch is still, for the most part, a pretty quality experience. It shows that 2K actually cares about the Switch version of their game. You know, when we got The Witcher 3, of course it looks worse than other versions, but you could tell they actually cared about the Switch audience to give us the best possible version. This does not feel like the best possible version on Switch. I refuse to believe that the Switch is hardware. This is the best you can do. I, I We've seen too many games that are so much better than this. So, I'm sorry. It's a bit of a negative one today. But man, I'm kind of bummed out because I really wanted to play this on Switch. I know I can play it on other platforms and play it for much cheaper. It still doesn't change the fact that Switch is my preferred platform, and I would have loved to play it here instead. Anyways, folks, you guys let me know what you think about this Alan Wake situation and uh, third-party Nintendo Switch ports in general down in the comments below. I am Nathaniel Robojance from Nintendo Pro. I want to thank all you guys for tuning in, and I'll catch you in the next video.